what's going on guys in today's video I'm gonna be going over uh, outbound acquisition and I'm gonna show you some results that one of my personal offers have gotten uh, not one of my clients offers not you know none of that I'm gonna show you results we've gotten specifically through our outbound acquisition channel on our b2c coaching program okay um, and I'll show you kind of the KPIs and the exact systems that are actually followed to make this work because when you do this the right way it is very scalable. Outbound DMs and uh, paid advertisements are my favorite acquisition methods, okay? Because paid ads, obviously you guys all know that is scalable. Um, outbound DM is scalable as well in a way by just adding more VAs and more DM setters, okay? Um, it's obviously not as easy as paid ads, it's just increasing a budget. You have to get a new VA and then ramp them up. But I actually have structured mine to where I have a a full-time DM manager and DM recruiter. So I'm not even touching this entire department and it just runs without me, okay? And I'll show you guys how that works in this video. Um, but Alex Ramosi, he's gotten, I think he said gym launch got to 450K per month just with outbound, okay? Um, and I think he said that saved his business from failing because at that point in time, ads weren't doing as well uh, for a specific niche or market or whatever he was saying. Um, and that's just why like some, some people, if you're trying to like, reaching B2B and get in contact with business owners, that's obviously hard to reach on ads. So outbound for like B2B, so you can just go out there and straight up spear them and uh, bring them into your funnel. Like it's a lot easier to get in direct contact and do the one-on-one, -on -one, okay? Um, Cause obviously sales wise, you know, one-on-one -on -one is the best you can do versus one to many like ads. But um, you know, ads are great for a lot of offers. I'd say almost every offer. I just also like adding an outbound uh, a team just for an additional acquisition system, an additional income stream for the business. Okay. It depends on the business and also wouldn't do both at the same time. If you don't have outbound dialed in, then you shouldn't be doing ads and outbound at the same time. I'd recommend dialing ads first and then doing some outbound or dialing outbound and then doing ads. I don't recommend doing them both at the same time. It's just going to be a headache. Okay. Um, cause there's so many different metrics with both acquisition systems. It's just no, no bueno. Okay. <laughs> um, anyways, so yeah, this is just like, uh, my personal, uh, offer what we had did in a month just off outbound. Now this is cash collect. This isn't revenue. Revenue would also obviously be higher because there's payment plans and stuff like that, but this is just cash collect. And as you can see, it had some gradual growth as well. So it's not like uh, a high month and then super low month and then a high month and a super low month, you know, outbound's pretty consistent. Uh, if you can do, if you do it the right way. Um, and then just literally this week, cause I still have outbound and, and my, uh, one of my offers, right? Uh, this is what we, our KPI is to send a week per, uh, DM setter, uh, 2,500. And you're going to be like, well, how do you do that? We do that with multiple accounts. I can explain all that in this video. Um, so none of them are hitting KPI. I set the KPI insanely high because that's what ideally I want them to hit. Our new people obviously are new. So they weren't ramped up into KPI yet. Like we just had hired them for the last week. Um, and then the other people just need to send more messages, but I'm still pleased with this amount of messages, honestly, for only five days. Like that's still pretty good. And they were booking me, you know, a lot of appointments. So, uh, not complaining. Uh, and for the amount that they are, uh, being paid salary wise, like it's, it's a high ROI and they're making bank because of the commission structure. And I'll explain that and how you want to hire people uh, in this video. So. Let's just go over the outbound sales team development and then we'll go over the strategy flow, okay? Uh, so this is what you're gonna wanna do. Okay, so sales asset wise, right? You're gonna wanna build out the outbound strategy, okay? You're gonna wanna get outbound scripts, okay? Market tested, validated, all that. You're gonna wanna outbound nurture mechanisms, you know, free training, uh, VSLs, a YouTube channel, whatever the case may be. You want DM setter training and onboarding SOPs, okay? Uh, you gotta do this the right way too. You don't wanna mess this up, uh, otherwise, like it's not gonna work. <laughs> Same thing with all these other things like the scripts and stuff. You gotta have a certain way you do it. Um, but I'm just giving you guys the overall framework. And then the next thing is 100 plus uh, IG slash Facebook accounts, okay? Um, you're gonna wanna bulk purchase these uh, and then you gotta make sure you do this the right way. You don't wanna buy uh, a certain type of accounts. You wanna buy uh, accounts that are, you know, aged and all this stuff, okay? Next thing is you want KPI tracking sheets. You wanna make sure you can actually track you know, the metrics of what your DM setters are doing, right? Uh, next thing is commission tracking system. So obviously you're, you, you have multiple reps at this point. You're going to want a system to kind of track uh, their payouts. And so it's very organized. So your payrolls is simplified. Okay. 
Uh, it's not like just one closer that you have to pay. This would be like seven, or even if you really scale it, you know, up to 30, 40 VAs or a hundred VAs, right? And so, I mean, that, that can get pretty tricky. So you're gonna want a payroll tracking system, okay? To track commissions and stuff. So uh, let's go to the outbound recruitment. So in outbound team management. So I hire a outbound DM sales manager on salary, okay? And so they, they do the recruitment process and they also do the management process. And so I'm completely removed entirely from this entire department, okay? Besides like improving and optimizing, you know, the scripts and uh, the strategies because the market shifts and all that stuff, right? So that's an ongoing thing that I do as a business owner, knowing my market the best. And, but the actual management and recruitment, that's completely delegated, right? Um, now where we source talent, we have a Discord server. So, so some of this isn't gonna work for some of you guys because, um, you know, uh, we, we, have in, we have a database of over 75K sales reps. You don't have that luxury, obviously, unless you like work with us, for example. So some of these methods you won't be able to use, but uh, Discord, uh, school, uh, we have thousands in each of these. Uh, our, our RepConnect software, so our hiring software for sales reps, we also source some through there. Uh, our talent pool, so our actual internal database. Our email list, we have over like, I, know, I think it's like over 25,000 sales rep emails now. Uh, and then also our Facebook groups where we have over... I want to say over 70k at this point as well. So we have we have big databases for our sourcing. Um, but next thing we do is we actually screen them. So we look at their experience, we look at their availability, and if they're fluent in English. Okay, it's very very simple. The guys, they're DMing. They're not doing phone setting or phone closing. You don't need to be as strict with this. Okay, so it's literally just experience, availability, and are they fluent in English? Do they have can they do it full time? You know, do they have prior experience? If so, that's ideal. They don't even need prior experience if you have your DM setter training and onboarding SOPs dialed in. But, I mean, ideally they have experience and you got this dialed in, right? Uh, next thing, onboarding. So we give them the docs as SOPs. So we have a specific doc that we do give them to onboard them so they know exactly what to do. There's a very specific way about going this. It's a mixture of text, a doc, and an, uh, also video. Uh, next thing, put them in the team chats, uh, the book call chats, so we can actually monitor what they're doing. Um, the KPI sheets, the contract since last science, like the actual agreement for, Hey, you're a sales rep, you're an independent contractor on our team, da, 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 da. and then the payout form. So we actually know how to pay out them or pay them out. Sorry. And then that's our onboarding process. And then we go into two weekly meetings. So I have a, uh, the, the sales manager actually does that. I, once again, I don't touch this. So they, they take the two weekly meetings, they're monitoring chats, they're, they're bettering the process and they're just making the overall department, uh, better. Uh, the next thing is the daily KPI sheet tracking. So Every single DM setter has their own KPI tracking sheet, obviously. And so the manager's checking that out and making sure that they're hitting KPIs or they're at least, you know, sending a decent amount of messages or, you know, getting some appointments. Okay. Cause that's obviously what we want. Um, next thing, uh, daily end of day chat checking. So this is very important. So we actually have all our DM setters upload into our, uh, private discord chat when they book an appointment and they upload all the screenshots of their DM sets so we can actually monitor what they're saying and make sure they're following the script and make sure that they're, they're being ethical and everything that we want, okay? So that's very important, okay? And then another thing you wanna do as well is have, um, what's it called? Have them upload screen recordings of all the accounts that they sent messages from at the end of the day. And so they know they can't get away with lying on their KPI sheets. They have to submit screen recordings of all their chat logs showing you that they've actually sent the messages. So that's that's huge as well. Uh, it holds them accountable, right? Um, next thing, ongoing system and optimization. So end of day reporting, sales manager. So I make the sales manager give an end of day report so I can actually you know get data on the systems, right? And then also end of the, pay, end of day report with the outbound DM setter, this is optional. Um, we're actually not even doing this right now because it's not really needed. We get enough data from, you know, like I just said, the. KPI sheets, and then the end of the day, uh, what do you say, uh, chat checking. Uh, next thing we do, one weekly constraint call. And so we do a call with all the reps, and this could be one of the weekly meetings as well, but we're basically just saying like, hey, you know, like where are the leads falling off in the script? You know, like what's going wrong? Why are you not setting as many, like blah, blah, blah appointments? Oh, this is going wrong, this is going wrong, this is going wrong. Like they'll give you the data. They'll tell you what's wrong with your scripts. They'll tell you what's wrong with the sales process. And so you can actually use that data and insight to actually optimize your sales process and make it actually work, right? Uh, next thing, uh, compensation strategy. So this is this is very unique, and I, I came up with this as well. Uh, well I guess I kind of came up with all this. Um, 
I kind of built this through trial and error over a couple of years. <laughs> I didn't have any video like this to watch. So, um, cause no one's really talking about this or really going in depth for, especially for free on, on how it works anyways. So what I do is salary plus commission. So, um, I hire people from the Philippines, India, third world countries to where $200 a month is a lot of money to them. And then also they make commissions as well. And so the, and with their hitting KPIs, my, my DM setters make juicy commissions, like decent commissions, even if they lived in the U S so you can imagine how much money they're making in third world countries. They are very, very serious about this role and you have to hire this overseas. You hire this in the U S they're not going to make enough money. They're going to churn and you're just gonna have to consistently keep hiring. You have to do third world country, but they have to also speak fluent English and you have to have a dial script. Okay. Now I usually do $200 per month plus commission. So I do the salary plus commission. Okay. And then I ramp them into KPIs, helping them earn a minimum of $500 plus per month in just commission. Okay. Then once they're making bank off commission, you know, they're making $500 or a thousand or 1500 a month. Like that's a lot of money for them. That's like making like six to seven K in the U S then we can remove the salary and go commission only after they are doing well. This is an option. You can do this. Okay. But you could not just start off by doing commission only one, because you're not going to get anyone to really bite this third world country. They want that security. They want that salary. And so you have to start with salary to get them started. But once they're ramped up and making good money, you don't need to, you don't need to say, uh, hey, you're going to make good money with this. They already know they're already making good money in commission. And then so they're going to be completely fine more than likely being commission only and not having the salary once they're actually ramped up. But you couldn't do it the other way around. You couldn't start them on commission only. They won't even bite that. They're not interested. So you start on salary plus commission, help them earn a bunch of commission. Then you move them to, uh, to commission only and remove the salary or keep the salary. For some of my people, I just keep the salary as well. I'm just like, it's, it's up to you. Okay. But it is a good, it is a good way to, to go about things. Okay. Uh, next thing with outbound flow strategy. So, uh, obviously Facebook group posts, uh, Facebook outbound DMS, Instagram outbound DMS, uh, Instagram outbound DM automation tool, that, which I'm not really going to get too in depth into that one. Um, but anyways, this is mainly for B2C and B2B as well. But like this would also work with like, you know, this could work with LinkedIn. This could work with, you know, any, any, any platform where your leads are hanging out, honestly, but this is what we specifically were using for our B2C, our Facebook group posts, Facebook outbound DMs from Facebook groups that have our targeted market, and then also outbound, uh, Instagram outbound DMs. Okay. And so how you want to go about this for the posts, you want to do the RC, uh, uh, so different types of posts. So you actually can make your own posts that attract what you're doing. So you or track the, the leads you want. So you can do lead magnets in the Facebook groups that have the audiences that you're trying to target. Okay. The next thing you can do is Facebook outbound DMs. Okay. Um, where you can, you can, you can, uh, message people that are making comments on posts. You can message group members. And then the flow you want to do is for the script wise is hook slash intent question. Uh, this is, this is kind of tailored to me, so it's not really going to work for you guys, but I, I can help you with that. If you guys ask tailored to your business. Obviously it's going to be different than mine. <laughs> um, and then next thing is the Instagram outbound DM. So you go to comp ad comments and likes. Now this is huge. So a lot of people don't think like this. So if you have your competitors running ads to your target market, then they're already doing the marketing and already finding and bringing them to one place. And then, so you can just have your outbound DM people go to their, uh, 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 comments and likes and then prospect them with a specific script. Okay. So not only are you eating market share, right? But they're literally doing the marketing for you. So that's an option you can do as well. Um, we, I don't, yeah, we're, I'm not scaling this up that much. We slightly do it. We're mainly in the Facebook, but we do this. We, this does work as well. It just depends on your offer. We're not really go, We're not really pushing this as much, but it works really well for specific offers and markets. Um, so highly recommend for sure. Um, and then this is just setter and closer team development. So not on the topic of what we're talking about today. Um, but yeah, hopefully this guys, hopefully this helps you guys. Um, like I said, I didn't have a video like this to watch. I had to literally trial and error and curate this over literally years. Um, so I know this will help you a lot. Just, you got to remember, just go over the sales assets. Like for all of this to even work, you have to have these assets pre-built and they have to be dialed in. 
okay? And they need to be perfect for your market and your offer. And the SOPs specifically, like this has to be dialed in. The strategy, like the places they're going and like who they're messaging, that's gonna have to be dialed in too. But that all comes down to your market and your ICP, like uh, exactly who you're trying to sell to, right? Uh, but yeah, hopefully this helps you guys. And uh, yeah, this is how you build a outbound acquisition system. And then also how you can automate it so it doesn't really require you that much. So hope this video helped. See you guys on the other side. Peace.